What is going on everybody? My name is Tatro and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects. MIDI controllers. All right, so if you've been tuning into this channel for a while, you know that I talk about MIDI controllers all the time, and I've even kind of made a video just like this before. But I've recently got a new influx of questions from people asking what are MIDI controllers and how do they start making music with them? So I wanna take this time to fully explain what a MIDI controller is, how one might use a MIDI controller, and some of my recommendations. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's answer the question. What is a MIDI controller? So MIDI controllers come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them even change shapes. And at a very basic level, they allow you to control software on a computer or a phone or a tablet, as well as a hardware synthesizer. And there are a few different ways MIDI controllers control software or hardware synthesizers. One we can recognize right away. A lot of them have keys like a piano. So you can send note messages to your hardware or your software. But for most controllers, you're not just sending the note message. You're not just telling the hardware or software what note to play. You're also sending a velocity message. That sounds pretty fancy, but it's just a fancy way of saying the sound changes depending on how hard or soft you hit the key. So for a basic keyboard controller, you're able to play music by playing notes on a keyboard and you're able to add dynamics just like you would with a piano by playing soft or hard. And it's really important to note here that if you're hoping to buy one of these keyboards and just pull it out of the box and start making music, you can't. They don't make sound. Not unless they are connected to software or synthesizer hardware. This is the main thing people just starting out get confused about. MIDI controllers control software and hardware. The sound comes from the software on the computer or the phone or the tablet or it comes from the hardware, like a synthesizer like this, the Micro Freak. Now, not all synthesizers have nice keyboards like this, the Micro Freak does. So I wouldn't really need a controller to play this because I could just put my fingers on the keys of the Micro Freak. Some hardware looks like this. This is a groove box called the Model Cycles. We'll talk a little bit more about groove boxes later in the video. But if you notice, this doesn't have any keys. However, it does have a MIDI import, which means I could connect a groove box like the Model Cycles to a keyboard controller like the Launch Key Mini that has a MIDI out jack on it. And now I can play this groove box with the keys from this Launch Key. Sound comes from the groove box because this is where the synth is. This, just the controller that I can use to play with a keyboard that I'm familiar with, that a lot of musicians are familiar with. Now I talked about being able to play notes like with a keyboard or a piano, but that's not all you can do with MIDI controllers. MIDI controllers can also control different parameters inside software or even on hardware. I have faders on this, the Launch Control XL, and I have knobs here. Obviously I'm not playing notes with these. These are controlling parameters within my software. I can adjust the volume like a regular volume mixer would, pan and sends. I can even custom map these controllers. So, so far we've seen keyboard controllers. We've seen controllers with knobs and faders. We also have controllers that have pads on them. So this four x four grid is something you'll see a lot on different types of controllers made most famous by the MPC probably. These are used a lot for finger drumming. This Sensor Morph here also has different overlays, meaning I can just swap out the overlay as needed. So here's a drum pad overlay. Some controllers like the very famous here, Akai MPK Mini have both pads and keys. So we've got eight pads at the top, keys at the bottom, as well as some knobs. So remember, all of these things used to control software or hardware. We can map these knobs to different things inside of our DAW, like volume or effects. We can play our instruments with the keys and we can play drums and instruments with the pads. But this begs the question, what software should you use? That's the question you have to answer before you're going to buy a MIDI controller. This is really, really important. And it really is a decision that you have to make based on your tastes. 
I advise that you check out some of your favorite producers, figure out what software they use to make the music that you like. I use Ableton Live. A lot of producers use Logic or FL Studio. Those seem to be the top three most popular DAWs or digital audio workstations. Big fancy way of saying the music making software that goes on your computer. Also, if you're super on a budget or you don't want to use a computer, there's lots of apps on phones, iPads, and even Android tablets that you can connect some of these controllers to and start making music for a lot less money than, say, buying full out Ableton. The reason I say software is super important is because some of these controllers are really DAW specific, meaning that they're built for a specific kind of software. Take this massive controller, for instance. This is Ableton Push. Obviously, it was developed and created by Ableton. So it's basically only useful in Ableton Live. So many of the functions built right into it are for that DAW, for that software specifically. On the other hand, we have the Machina Mark III. So this is a controller that is made specifically for Native Instruments Machina software. Now you can open up Machina in Ableton Live as a plugin, and this controller here will map beautifully to that software. Once we start to unravel this, you'll notice that different software companies make multiple kinds of controllers. So if we pair the Machina Mark III with the Native Instruments Control M32, what you'll see here is a little screen and some buttons that you probably can't read, but they reference things directly from Native Instruments software. Not only that, but when you buy a controller that is made by a software company, they usually communicate really nicely. So for most of Native Instruments sound library and plugins, when you plug in these controllers, these knobs will automatically map to things that you need within the Native Instrument plugins. This is why knowing what software you're gonna use is really important because investing in a library of plugins and effects and sounds like native instruments can be pretty costly. So if you're gonna do that, you're probably gonna to wanna to invest in a controller that works well with those software and you can't get any better than the controller that's made by the software company. Archuria is another great example of this because they make some great sounds, great plugins, and they also make great controllers like the Mini Lab here. When you use Archeria's sounds and you bring them up as a plugin in your DAW software, these knobs and these pads automatically link up with those plugins in a really nice way. So you have controllers that work really nicely with software plugins. Think of plugins as software inside of software. The DAW is the big thing that everything lives inside. The plugins are within the DAW. But controllers like the Mini Lab also have great DAW control on them. So as an Ableton user, the Arturia Mini Lab also has some functions of launching session clips in Ableton Live, which is one of the main workflow functions that I use within that DAW, but it's very DAW specific. Another controller that does that really well is the Launch Key Mini, another really great Ableton Live controller because not only does it have keys and pads and knobs, it also has workflow functionality specific to Ableton Live. Right on the controller, we have capture MIDI buttons, we have stop solo mute, we have different functionalities for these pads that only make sense within Ableton Live software. So say you were an FL Studio user, my first recommendation to you would not be the Launch Key Mini Mark III because there'd be so much text on here and so much functionality that wouldn't make sense to you in your DAW. Now, a lot of the controllers I've showed so far have been mini controllers, meaning the keys are kind of small. But let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. This is the Launch Key Mini Mark III with standard mini keys. And this is the Complete Control A25 by Native Instruments. Now, the A25 has full size keys. They, both of these controllers, 25 keys, but you can see there's an obvious size difference here. These are gonna be way closer to the size of a regular piano. And this is a little tighter. So if the size of the keys is important to you, you'll want to take note whether a controller has mini keys or full-size keys. There are also controllers out there with added layers of functionality you might not have thought of, like the Seaboard or most of the Rolly products. They employ a type of MIDI called MPE, meaning multi-polyphonic expression, 
Remember how we talked about at the beginning that a controller takes in note information? So if I'm playing a G, it tells the software play G, but it also takes velocity information. I'm playing a G, but I'm playing it really hard and loud. Well, there's another layer of expression with MPE enabled controllers like the Seaboard block, meaning that I can slide up and down these notes or slide up and down the keyboard and I will get different sounds based on the complexity of the messages that dis this type of controller can send. The Sensil Morph also employs MPE on its controller. This is really useful for folks who are into film scoring or trying to get an acoustic sound because if you play strings on an MPE enabled controller, you can get really natural sounding vibrato or bends, things like that. Another MPE enabled controller that looks pretty different than the rest of the controllers we've looked at today is the Artifon Instrument 1. Now, as you can see, this is meant to look a little bit more like a guitar because not all of us are keyboard players. Some of us came to production and electronic music through other instruments like the guitar. And so you can see that it has a fretboard with six quote unquote strings that are not real strings and then six little sensors to pluck. There are lots of other similar guitar style controllers like the Jammy and like the jam stick that actually employ real strings. I like the Artifon Instrument 1 because you can lay it on the table. And now the frets, the boxes on the fretboard, are not just frets, they're drum pads that you can finger drum on. We'll talk about controllers that are a little more versatile and less DAW specific in my recommendations later. But before we get into recommendations, I wanna to talk to you about the sponsor for today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare's classes are designed for real life. So no matter your schedule, Skillshare has short and long classes that you can take to make fit to your own schedule. Understanding all these concepts about MIDI controllers and then about DAWs and music theory can actually be really daunting and overwhelming, but Skillshare has classes taught by Ableton certified trainers where you can learn complex music theory within the context of your DAW. So not only are you learning music theory, but you're learning the software that you're gonna use to employ that music theory. A premium membership to Skillshare is super affordable at under $10 a month, but the first 500 of my subscribers down below get two free months of premium membership to Skillshare. My Instagram audience has been growing quite steadily over the past year, and it's actually one of the major tools I use to promote my music and my videos. If you wanna learn similar skills with Instagram photography, you should check out this course by Brandon Wolfel to learn how to capture these moments and make dynamic content for Instagram that gets people attracted to your music and your content. So use the link down below and get the two month free premium membership of Skillshare. All right, so that's a ton of info I just threw at you and you're probably still wondering what controller should I get? So considering that you've thought about what software you might be using, I have three solid options that I can recommend. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice about the three controllers that I will show you is that they are all mini key controllers. This is because I'm assuming if you are a beginner, you're on a budget and you're not looking to spend a huge amount of money. One more thing you're gonna notice about these three controllers, and it's one of the main reasons I picked them, is because they all feature pads, keys, and knobs. These are the three main things that I look for in a controller that I need a controller for. I'm either controlling effects with the knobs, launching clips or finger drumming with the pads, and then obviously playing musical ideas with the keyboard. All three of these controllers have that. The first one I wanna to talk to you about is the Launch Key Mini Mark III. If you're an Ableton user, this is a no brainer. This is one of my favorite controllers. Why? because it has so much functionality workflow wise packed right in. Record and play buttons, capture MIDI. You can launch clips with these pads. You can finger drum on these pads. These pads can become a note grid. It even has a built-in arpeggiator. Not only that, but it has MIDI out, meaning I can control some hardware with this controller. That's something these two other recommendations do not have. But. Again, it is very Ableton specific. So if you're not an Ableton user specifically, pass this one. Recommendation number two, the Mini Lab Mark II. Where this Mini Lab really rocks is the keybed. The keybed has just enough resistance that 
separates it from these two keyboards here where it almost has, it's not quite weighted, but it has a more natural feel. If keybed is important to you, the mini lab is the way to go. Also as an Ableton user, there is a functionality to launch clips in here, but the workflow functionality is not so overbearing that other DAW users can't use it. Of course you can, because as I talked about earlier, the knobs and the pads sync up really well with Arturia's Analog Lab software, great plugins, great sounds. So that's something to think about there. But this one wins in terms of keybed. Now, this is a recommendation I make all the time, but this is the overall workhorse, goes with any software. You don't have to be locked into a specific kind of software to use it. Uh, the Akai MBK Mini. Why? Again, it's got keys, pads, knobs. It also has a built-in arpeggiator, pitch bend and mod joystick here, as well as sustain, which all three of them actually have. This seems pretty basic, and that's the reason why this is one of the top three recommended, because if you don't wanna be locked into a software, if you're just learning, maybe you won't like a software. So say you get the launch key, you try Ableton and you hate it, you wanna move on to FL Studio, well, you just bought the launch key and you're kinda of stuck with it. Whereas here, if you use Ableton and you like it, great, you can still use this with Ableton. You try FL Studio, you like it, great. You can still use the Akai MPK Mini. Not that you can't use this controller with other DAWs, but it just doesn't make sense. The functionality on there, it's Ableton specific. Don't underestimate the pairing of controllers. So say you actually love Ableton Live, but you want big pads like on the Akai MPK Mini, unlike the small pads on the Launch Key Mini. What if you paired the Akai MPK Mini with a launch pad? Then you have workflow functionality, launch clips, record ideas, play musical ideas, control effects could go hand in hand. Of course, there's one freak of nature that we can't end this video without talking about. It's the Akai MPK Mini Play. Now I already have multiple videos on my thoughts in the Akai MPK Mini Play, but here's a MIDI controller that looks just like the Akai MPK Mini. Don't they look so similar? Has a few less knobs because it actually has onboard sounds. Now I've already publish videos on my thoughts on these sounds and the fact is that they're not great, but don't get swept up in the idea of a controller that has sounds built in because there's no sequencer. There's no way to loop these sounds. Think of this when it's not plugged in, into a controller as a guitar. You pick up a guitar and you play it. You can't record your sound with the guitar itself. It just plays. So maybe if you want to practice some and then also have a controller on the side, Kind PK Mini Play. My final note on this is maybe you say the heck with all this, this is too complicated. I don't want to use software on a computer. I don't want to hook anything up. I just want to sit with a device and play music. Well, there's a number of iPhone and iPad apps you could use without actually using a computer per se and a controller, but there is an option out there for you. You're looking for a standalone device or a groove box. This is the Novation Circuit. No computer required. You can load samples into it and play them like on a drum rack. And you can also play the two synth engines. It's got a speaker built in. You plug your headphones into it. You can record your ideas, have a ball, make beats using this groove box only. Alternatively, you've got things like the MPC-1 by Akai, which is a full standalone MPC. It's got a giant screen here. The advent of this is it basically has a computer built right into it. So you don't need a separate software on your computer. Everything happens within this box. That said, those are just options if you don't wanna use a computer, if you were totally overwhelmed by the things you heard in this video. All right, so I hope this helped you if you were in the market for a MIDI controller and you were looking to start making music from home, either with a laptop, a phone, iPad, or hardware synthesizers. Remember to think about what software you wanna use. Decide if there's a controller out there made by that software company or that is built to function specifically for that software and then get the best controller for your use and for your budget. I'm gonna leave some videos on the end screen that you can dive into if you wanna see some of these controllers in action. And if you just found my channel, make sure you subscribe for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Link to my Patreon is down below if you'd like to support. And also get yourself two months free of Skillshare while you're down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.